Hello and welcome to this thought for the day. In this talk I'm focusing on St Sergius of Moscow, monk and teacher who died in the year 1392. He's remembered on the 25th of September and the readings for the day come from the book of Ecclesiastes and the Gospel of Luke. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 3 tells us that there is a time for every purpose under heaven. The Gospel reading from Luke raises the question whether those who have encountered Jesus realise that this is God's time of coming among us. The responses Jesus gets to his question of who he is highlight that many do not realise the importance of the moment. In Sergius we see someone who entered fully into God's time. He was endowed with the wisdom to know what the season was. It was, as it always is, God's time. If only we would recognise it as Sergius and his followers did. Sergius was born around the year 1314, most likely in the Russian village of Anista near Rostov. After their village fell under the control of Prince Ivan of Moscow, his parents were impoverished and moved to Radonez. After the death of his parents, Sergius followed his calling to a solitary ascetic life. He became a monk and moved to a secluded place in the woods, but soon found other monks coming to live nearby. They persuaded him to be their abbot and he was ordained priest. If one word could capture what it was that people found in his teaching, it would be wisdom. But it was his personal qualities that won him most respect. Writing in the book The Study of Spirituality, Sergei Haeckel comments searchingly in this way. It is remarkable that so reticent a monk should have made so indelible an impression not only on the monastic world of his time, but on the shaping of his country's history as a whole. Sergius's monastic house, which began as a hermitage in the wilds for his brother and himself, became in due course the best endowed and most renowned of Russian monasteries. His relics became the focus of a national pilgrimage down to the present day. Yet he wrote nothing, was not known as an orator, and was weak in administration. Above all, it was his radiant integrity which contemporaries cherished. That's the end of the quote. The monastery to which Haeckel refers is the Trinity Lavara of St. Sergius. The icon Artis Rublev was believed to have worked there, and his famous icon of the Holy Trinity is said to have been commissioned in honour of St. Sergius. In a travesty of our modern era, the Bolsheviks closed the monastery in 1920, turned its buildings over to civil uses and museums. Many of the treasures were sold off. In a twist of fate, however, the monastery was returned to the Orthodox Church by Joseph Stalin in 1945, as he continued to court the Church for support against the Nazis. It is now a United Nations World Heritage Site. During his lifetime and far beyond, Sergius's disciples spread his teachings broadly. They eventually founded some 40 monasteries. Some are still in operation. Others followed the same fate as Holy Trinity Monastery and were converted to museums. Sergius was offered the position of Metropolitan of Moscow, but refused, believing that his calling was as a monk rather than as a bishop. There was another side to this monk who, amid his quiet devotions, achieved so much influence. He was also a gifted diplomat. He was one of those special Christian leaders who was revered by princes and common people alike. Most famously, he was consulted by Dmitri, Prince of Moscow, who faced an army of invading Mongols. When he had satisfied himself that Dmitri had exhausted all peaceful means open to him, he sent the prince into battle with his blessing and two of his warrior monks. The prince won a decisive victory which became celebrated as a formative moment in Russia's history. Sergius of Radones did what he could to discern which was a time for war and a time for peace. He could have claimed that his asceticism exempted him from involvement in such affairs, but somehow, in his wisdom, he was able to live a life of solitude that was never disconnected from the real needs of his fellow monks nor his fellow citizens. The fruit of his solitude was borne out in his personal qualities and in his teaching. 
During this pandemic, most of us have had to spend more time in solitude than we would normally. Some are making the most of this time and even enjoying some of it. But for too many others, this forced separation brings with it the worries of financial hardship, relationship difficulties and medical complications. Hopefully, we're on the verge of things easing and this time of breaking down will become a time of building up. And this time of weeping will become a time of laughter. This time of mourning will become a time to dance. I hope in the meantime, we can take some lessons from Sergius. That even from the quietness of our hearts, we can reach out to others, knowing that God will use us to bring encouragement, laughter, and even some socially distanced dancing into each other's lives. The Lord be with you.